walk away offended by it. You don't walk away feeling like you've been cut down to pieces because of the way it was executed. We have to fight ourselves from always feeling that we have a right to speak about things. We have to have good discernment, the spirit of discernment, to know when we're to say something. And not be offended that somebody doesn't want to hear what you have to say. It's just, you know, for me, I'm like, no, this conversation's not going. Let's, let's just change it. And it happens to all of us. We have all spoken things that are evil and wrong. And they're not, that's not right. But we have to learn that we have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken that. I may have felt that way. I may know truth about this situation. I may have facts. But I shouldn't have spoken it that way. Look at what Romans 10, 1 and 3 says. Brothers and sisters, my heart desire and prayer, this is what Paul, um, and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I, this is the key point that I want to show you that Paul said, verse 2, for I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. A lot of time, people are zealous for God through their works, not through the knowledge not through the finished work of what Jesus did for them, through works. They think because they work at the church that they're zealous for God, yet they don't receive any of the knowledge of God's word. They don't receive the sermons that are being preached. They're above the law. They don't have to be in church. They don't have to be in the sanctuary. I know the word. I preach the word. I teach the word. I do this. I do that. I help with here. I, I clean bathrooms. I do this. Whatever it is that people do, I know. I felt that way once. I thought, I get down to the nitty-gritty of the bathroom. I don't need all. I know the word. I, I'm capable as a pastor to go down and clean those toilets. What do I need the word? I know the word. I needed it more than anybody in this sanctuary at that time in my life because I was arrogant and prideful and self-righteous. And I'm not ashamed to admit that that's what I was. That's who I was. Yet I thought I was a good person. I would have fought you tooth and nail that I was a good person because of everything that I was doing. And yet God showed me that I wasn't any good to him. Many of us walk in here like we know so much and that the truth, the, the real truth about that, whatever we know, it's going to be shown in our fruit. That's what we fail to realize, that our fruit demonstrates everything that we know. Your fruit demonstrates whether you're walking in love, whether the love of God abides in you. Your, your fruit will demonstrate whether you're capable of repentance. Your fruit will demonstrate whether you're capable of asking for forgiveness. Your fruit will show whether you're arrogant, whether you're prideful, where you're just a mean, nasty person that nobody could say hi to because you chew their head off. Good morning. What's so good about it? Have a good day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> blessings. Yeah, yeah. Blessings. Blessings. Don't bother me. I'm busy. I'm in my thought. I'm thinking. That's who I was. My kids will come up. Don't, don't, don't bother me. Don't you see that I'm praying? Why would you disturb me if I'm praying? If you see that I'm down here praying, don't come down and bother me. Thank you, Jesus, for my children. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for this. Thank you for the life that you've given me. I'm a good person, but I just chewed off my child's head because they disturbed me. My child, what did my child see? That's what we do. We continue to live our life hell-bent on having it our way and on our terms and then Slapping Jesus right on it in the name of Jesus. God told me. God said this. God said that. I heard God say this today. Yet there's no fruit of godliness in anything that's being said, spoken, in any of the actions. People look at you and they say, Ooh, today's not a good day. That's what they used to say to me at work. Today's not a good day for you, Carmen. 
excuse me, Carmen, um, is, is it okay? Are you good today? I need to talk to you about something. Yeah, 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 come on in, come on in. And then when I came to know Christ, I had to rewind back all those things. Carmen, can I see you? Sure, come on in. You're not busy? No, 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 come on in. I'm busy, but you can come on in. Why? Because I knew there was a love in me. I just desired Christ to reflect, be reflected in me. And so it changed my heart. There was a real transformation. And that's going to lead me to my next point. If there is no transformation in your life of the salvation of Christ in you, then you have to go back and reflect. If people see you and they see a pricky you, like I've told him, he said it, he admit, I'm not saying anything he didn't already admit, but there were times where I would, he would, he wakes up in the morning and he's much, much, much better now. But we went through a season where it was like, are you Jekyll? Or is this Hyde? Who, would you, who, who, who are you today? And he'd be like, what are you talking about? Oh, now we know who you are. Okay. <laughs> because he was just pricky. Nothing, nothing that I said, everything that I said was twisted and turned. And then he was like a bull in a china closet in the house. And <laughs> you just set the environment in a very <laughs> negative place. And we had to have a heart to heart and said, this can't be. You can't be. We can't be what we can't be one way when we're out in public and another way when we're behind closed doors. That's for every one of us. But that's now, we're not conscious of that. Many of us, we could care less. We could care less who we're surrounded with. We could care less who we're in front of. If we're going to be pricky, we're going to be pricky. If we want to be ungodly, we're going to be ungodly. If the enemy can mess with us, he'll get, he'll, trust me, Listen, all he needs is a foothold to get a stronghold. That's all he needs. All he needs is for you to give him a foothold, and then he has a stronghold. That's all, whether you realize that or not. And so what happens to us, we open the door, we give him a foothold, and the next thing you know, we become Dracula in life. We want to suck the blood out of everybody. We want to bite and claw into everybody. And then one day, and then come in the next day, blessings, blessings. Blessings. <laughs> 25 years. I say pastors are the ones that get the most abused because one day they get blessings, pastor. And then a couple of weeks down, hey, Mother Nelson. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you, Mother Nelson. It was great seeing you. Great talking to you. Oh, you spoke about me in the pulpit. It was me that you were talking about. How did you know that that was what was going on? You know how many times he got accused of that? How many times people stormed out of our church? Because pastor put out their business. They didn't know how pastor put out their business, but pastor put out their business. And left offended. Pastor used to say there's a little birdie somewhere that's telling on your secret. And if you paid attention, all of you would even know your own little secrets from the birdie. We get offended. We create offense. If there is no transformation, if there is no renewing of our mind, if there is no receiving this word and saying, Lord, it's got me all over it, even though I don't know. When he preaches sometimes, i got to put my head down. I'm like, that's got me all over it, even though I don't know every part of it. But show me the me in this sermon. Show me what part of me I need to work on. Show me what part of me is guilty of this sin so that I can repent, so that I can ask for forgiveness, so that I can receive this knowledge and move forward in the power and resurrection of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when I do pray, when I do lay hands on the sick, they are healed. When I do lay hands to cast out demons, they flee. 
when I do speak a word, it comes into existence. That is the finished work of the cross. So that I walk in the healing and restoration and resurrection of my Lord and Savior. If we are living life in a status quo mode, we're not producing fruit. We're not engaging in the kingdom. We're not doing anything that represents Christ that people can say, hey, wow, that was great work that you did for the kingdom. Love that word that you gave. Love that evangelism. Love this. Love that. That we're representing ourselves as children of the most high. Then you have to check yourself out. What am I doing? Am I a child of the most high God? Because as children, we are all mandated to put our hands and feet to the plow. We're all mandated to do something. It's not about sitting back, coming to church, walking out of church, going out and having something to eat, and then going back to life as normal, coming in on Wednesday, sharing a thought that God gave you, and then going out and living your life as normal with no change, no transformation, no newness of mind, no change in your love walk, no fruit. It speaks volume. And guess what? You can't accuse me for judging your fruit because the Bible says that I have a right. It says you will know them by their fruit. And so we live a very defeated and somber life. Yet this word is so rich, so life-changing, so life-transforming. It's a devil-stomping word. It's a victorious word. It's a word that says we win. As long as we don't throw the towel in, we win. Do we have to fight for that win? Yes. But the battle is the flesh. The battle is this earth suit that we've been placed in. But we win. It's been fixed. It's been fixed. And if you just believe that and you hold on to that, and you were tenacious about that, and you're tenacious and passionate about your servanthood for Christ. We know persecution comes, but the Bible says, is bless those that are persecuted. There's a blessing that comes with persecution. So don't shy away from being known as a believer, as a Christian. Don't run from it. Don't let it scare you. Run towards it because you're blessed. Amen? Amen. I want us to stand. <laughs>